five waiver wire targets for week 17. Number one on my list is Gigi Jackson. The Grizzlies have been ravaged by injuries this year. We saw John Morant first be suspended, and then he went down for the entire year. And then we saw Marcus Smart go down a couple of times, and he's still out of the lineup dealing with a finger injury. And then Desmond Bain got hurt, and he's still dealing with an ankle injury and is without a timetable for a return. And given the state of the Grizzlies, it would not be shocking to see them not push him. At this point, players like Vince Williams and Gigi Jackson have been thrust into larger workloads. And it looks like the Grizzlies are sort of embracing the transition. They traded away Steven Adams and Xavier Tillman, and they also rewarded Jackson with a four-year contract last week. He was playing on a two-way deal, so it was really nice to see a second-round pick solidify his place in the NBA for at least a little bit. Like any rookie, Jackson took a little time to get up to speed, but he seems like he's found his way, especially recently. Over his last eight games, he's averaged around 27.5 minutes, and in those games, he's averaged 15 points, nearly five rebounds, one steal, 0.8 blocks, and has knocked down a little bit more than two triples. And given the circumstances, it wouldn't be too far gone to think that this might be his baseline moving forward. I could see him getting close to 28 minutes a night for the rest of the season. The Grizzlies just gave him that four-year contract, like I mentioned, so they clearly see his potential. And I think if you're an aggressive fantasy manager, I would try to target him now before silly season. If there were a couple holes in his game, I would say it's his shooting percentage and also his assist-to-turnover ratio. He's shooting at just under 40% for now, and he boasts a 1-to-1 assist-to-turnover ratio. I think his shooting percentage will definitely improve, just given that he's a front-court player, and I think the playmaking will only come with time. So if you can punt those two things, I think he's a great pickup. Next up on the list is Andre Drummond. Drummond is rostered in 43% of leagues, and while he may not be the player of old, he's still been very productive. And with the Bulls losing Zach Levine for the season and Patrick Williams still being out of the lineup, there's some opportunity for Drummond to soak up some extra minutes. Up until now, he's basically just been Nikola Vucevic's backup, but over his last 10 games, he's seen a nice increase in his workload. Playing almost 19 minutes a night, and he's been nearly an automatic double-double, scoring around 11 points and grabbing around 9 rebounds. He's also gotten one steal and about 0.7 blocks, and he shot at 62% from the field, so he's going to help you in a lot of categories. As we know by now, he's not going to help you with your free throws, and he's not going to get you very many assists or three-pointers at all, really, but he's definitely a solid low-end big who's capable of having big nights. And with the Bulls sitting in the nine spot, they're going to be fighting for that play-in tournament. So if you can grab him now and you have a spot open at the end of your bench, I would consider doing it. He's been a pretty solid streamer all year, and under the radar, he's been one of the best players on a per 36 minute basis. I think if he can get close to 25 minutes, the production will follow. Next, I want to talk about a couple of players who just got traded to the Hornets. Trey Mann and Vasily and Michich. Gordon Hayward got shipped off to OKC, and Mann and Michich were stuck behind SGA and Josh Giddy, so they really didn't get much playing time. But just looking at their first game as Hornets, it looks like both of them are going to be utilized a lot more in Charlotte. They both were one assist shy of double-doubling. And right now, the Hornets don't really have a point guard. LaMelo Ball has been dealing with an ankle injury for much of this year, and he doesn't have a defined timetable for a return. They just traded P.J. Washington, they traded Gordon Hayward, they traded Terry Rozier earlier this year to the Heat, and it seems like they're kind of transitioning at this point. It wouldn't be shocking to see Mann and Mitchich get a heavy workload down the stretch. The Hornets only have 11 wins, and in the post-Michael Jordan ownership era, it looks like the Hornets are searching for an identity, which is actually a great formula for players like Mann and Mitchich. I could see them getting close to 25 minutes each a night. I think Mann will probably start, but it really won't matter. Both of these guys should see some good minutes down the stretch, and if you're looking for a guard and are feeling aggressive, I would take a chance on either one of them. Last on my list is Corey Kispert. Kispert's rostered in 23% of leagues, and he's basically a three-point specialist. He doesn't get a lot of minutes, but he can get points and threes in a hurry. He's been pretty steady all year and has been a pretty good streamer, but given how strong his play has been over the last two weeks, he's become a must pickup. He's been good for nearly 17 points, four rebounds, almost two and a half assists, 0.7 stocks, and has been shooting at 54% from the field. And he's also been making 2.7 three-pointers per game. So he's definitely offering more than just three-pointers at this point. And if you're okay with some minimal defensive stats, he is a great add, especially in points leagues. I did want to mention that given the minimal minutes, he could cool off in a hurry, but he passes the eye test to me, and I think he warrants a pickup at this point, both in 12-team leagues and 14-team leagues. Those are some waiver wire pickups to consider for Week 17. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and let me know your thoughts on Week 17 in the comments below. Thank you.